Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about the events and event handling in Tinkter. We would focus on the bind function and talk a little elaborately about the main loop. So events handling is an important part of Tinkter module. In this video, we would try to understand the basic things associated with it. And in the next video, we would see a related example. Okay. So we would try to make the program a little interactive by giving user inputs from the keyboard. So that would be very much done by the event handlers. Okay, so let's start writing the code for it. I'll import or I'll write from Tinkter, import star. Then I'll get my window. I'll write win equals tk. Then I'll give in a title. I'll write win dot title. Let the title be event handling. Okay, so I told you I'd be telling you a little more about the main loop. So whenever you create a Tinker application, we have always been calling the main loop. Okay, at the end. So why do we call the main loop? What the main loop actually does? It checks whether an event has occurred or not. It checks for an event, occurrence of an event. So if there is some event that has occurred, then the written code, the code that the user has given would be executed. So as the main loop has checked for an event occurrence, the program written will be executed as a response. Okay, so you need to write the code that will be executed in response to an event. Okay. So you write these functions called event handlers for the events that you use in your application. Okay. Now I would be creating a very similar event handler for every time I press a key on the keyboard, I should get that key printed on the console. Okay, not the Tinker window, but the console. So what I'd write is, I'll write def. So I'll have a function for that. I'll write def pressed key and in brackets I'll write event I'll give event as an argument and I'll write print event dot char so that simply completes what I just said I want to print whatever I clicked okay so now we would move to the bind function to call an event handler whenever an event occurs on a widget or function or method we use the bind function okay the event handler is said to be bound to that event because it's called every time the event occurs okay and how do we do that we'll just write for our window win dot bind okay and the first parameter would be the sequence so is just a string of the form event name okay i'll just write it down i'll write here the event name is key so in double quotes i'll write key and i should give this less than and greater than sign around it okay that's how you write the event name and this event name can be any of tinkter's events so there are many events in tinkter we have enter leave button one button two or key so here it is key and then we'll have the function name okay you can see for bind we have to give sequence and then the function okay so the event handler basically so i have pressed key right pressed key as the function okay so that completes my bind function and then i'll run the main loop i'll write win dot main loop now whenever the main loop would run it will check for the event so i have declared my event here as a pressed key function okay i have given it as the argument and whenever this event will occur what is my event the event is the user giving an input from the keyboard while by pressing a key. Okay. So whenever this event occurs, this function would be carried out. Okay. This part of code would be executed as a response to the event occurrence. Okay. So that's what should happen 
Now let's check if that really happens. Whenever I click on the key, I should see that key printed on the console. Okay, let's do that. So I have this tincture blank screen. Okay, and I'd not do anything with the screen, but I just start typing something and uh, that should be typed out on the console automatically without me taking the con uh, cursor over there. Okay, so let's do that. I'll just press D and there it is. You can see it on the console. And then you can see T and then you can see Q and let me press a numeric, let it be one. I'll press shift one. Okay, and then I can press M. And I can give in any character. Okay, this was an semicolon and an inverted comma. So that's it about this program. I just wanted to show you how interactive Tinker can be. And we'll see a related example in the next video. Thank you.